Welcome to Fluid Mechanics. We continue our study of control volume analysis for a fluidic system. And by that we mean um, studying the mass, momentum, and energy conservation loads for such control volume. Uh, in a control volume, fluxes of mass come in and out from the inlets, in the inlets and outlets. Um, and as, they, uh, as these masses come in and out, they carry with them um, momentum and energy. And we are interested in understanding the balances between, of these momentums and energies. What we have learned in the past in previous courses, um, we, know, we knew how to uh, write the conservation equations for a fixed mass system. Uh, but when you have fluxes of mass coming in and out of a control volume, uh, then we need something to help us very be able to rewrite those equations for such control volumes. And that's where the Reynolds transport theorem comes in. It helps us go from a fixed mass system, which we've studied in dynamics and other courses, into a control volume system where masses are, come in uh, and out of the control volume. So that's all we're going to say about the Reynolds transport theorem. We're not going to go into any detail. And we're going to take its result at face value. Um, and we will, we will take it as a given and move from there without much loss of continuity. So if you're mathematically inclined and you'd like to look at to understand what the derivation comes from, uh, please uh, look at the book. So let's start with mass conservation for a control volume. Now we're talking about a control volume. Uh, it could be um, the engine of an airplane, the jet engine, and we draw uh, a control surface around it and mass is coming in, the mass of air comes in, you have fuel crossing into um, from the fuel lines into the combustion engine and these things mix and they leave at the other end. So that's what we're talking about as a, as a control volume, as an example. So we want to be able to balance, to write the balance equation for these masses because what mass conservation is, mass is not created nor destroyed. Um, and there is enough evidence that um, this is actually true in our engineering systems. Um, so for those who are interested in the Reynolds transport theorem, this is the part of the fixed, this is the fixed system, the fixed mass part, and here is your control volume um, part of the part of the equation. Um, and we're just going to take this part right here at face value and continue as if we know how this came to be. So we were going to, uh, this would be our starting point. Uh, so our equation uh, for uh, the conservation of mass is, is this particular one. So I've just the d by dt of the integral rho dv over the control volume plus the integral over the control surface, the surface of the control volume of rho v relative dot nda uh, must balance out to, uh, to zero. So we're... This is, this is our starting point, and we're going to take this as, uh, as a true statement. And now let's look at the two terms that we have here. We have term A and term B. What mass conservation tells us, for instance, our engine, we said we have, ma we have flow coming in, flow of air coming in, flow of air leaving, and we have uh, flow of fuel coming through the fuel lines. Um, so we can conserve the fuel mass, or at least the fuel atoms, uh, is conserved. So the fuel is composed of hydrocarbons, air is composed of nitrogen and uh, oxygen and other elements. And then you leave as combustion products. So if I, I can try and conserve each one of those elements, or I can just talk about the air, uh, the air itself. Um, so for, if I'm interested in the air, uh, mass balance, I could just look at the air coming in and the air leaving and um, see what's, what's going on. So what this equation tells me is that if I have more mass flow rate of air leaving the control volume than what's coming, then it has to accumulate in the, in the control volume. This term is the accumulation term, and this term is the mass fluxes coming in and 
leaving at the boundaries of the control surface. So here is the boundaries. This is inside the control volume. Um, so that cons that uh, accounts for all the fluid accumulation, or for that matter, if the accumulation is negative. For instance, if I have more mass flow leaving my control volume than what's coming, then I'm that difference must be accounted for by loss from the mass inside the control volume. And this is what's happening uh, at the at the boundaries of the of the control volumes. So, so these are mass fluxes in and out of the um, control volume. Um, so let's look uh, at a more uh, rigid example, something we're familiar with. So the inflation of a balloon. Um, let's look talk about what my control volume is. So my control volume is would be actually the skin of the balloon. And that balloon has one inlet which is hooked up to this pipe. So the the control surface of my balloon is the whole of the skin of the balloon and the control volume has a volume of air inside it so I'm now conserving the mass of air the the mass of air so air doesn't get destroyed and it doesn't get uh, created in the process of filling a balloon so let's look at those two terms um, the term that uh, accounts for the increase of for the inflation of the balloon uh, which is the increase in the mass inside the balloon is this is this guy the rate of change of mass inside the control volume it has to be has to come from somewhere so it's not created it has to come from somewhere so it really comes through as a flux term f through this inlet pipe that is hooked up to the mouth of this balloon it's it's as simple as that uh, don't worry much about about the um, about the different terms, we're going to come to each one of them uh, in a second. So let's now look at a little bit more detail or, uh, uh, at those uh, two terms in the mass conservation equation. Um, rho is the density of the fluid. Uh, v is the volume. Uh, of the control volume. So here, the first integral um, is over the control volume. We're, we're going to come for in a sec to why do we have integrals here. Um, but bear with me. This is inside the control volume. This term uh, re refers to the inside of the control volume, and the circle term on the right refers to uh, the boundaries of the to what's happening at the boundaries of the control volume. Um, Rho again is the density. V relative, Vr is the uh, relative velocity, and it's a vector. Uh, N is the unit vector normal to the surface of the control volume, and N always points outward from the control volume. So if this is an inlet, then this would be my um, uh, my N vector. It's a unit vector perpendicular to the area A and points away from the control volume. And A is the area uh, uh, of the surface. It's DA is the an elemental uh, area on the surface of the control volume. So you have, that's your DA, NV, and T is time. Uh, T is time, and this is the dot product. So you'll see the V relative is a vector and the unit vector normal to the surface n is also a vector. So why do we have integrals? Um, this is actually one of one of the hallmarks of um, control volume analysis. It's actually often called the integral form of the conservation equations because uh, these equations you'll see as we move along uh, that when we also talk about um, linear momentum and energy conservation, we will have integrals. So what we're saying is, uh, if you look at rho dv, uh, v is the volume, rho times v, you get a mass. So rho dv is just the mass, is the dm. It's the, it's an, excuse me, it's an elemental mass inside, so here, inside the control volume. And uh, dA is an elemental area over the surface of the control volume. So what we're saying is that, 
um, for this row DV, which is the DM that's inside the control volume, when I sum them all up, so by doing an integral, that means I am su summing all the masses that are within the boundaries of my control volume. So all this term is just really the mass w between quotations. It's the mass inside the control volume. So in other words, this first term is just the rate of change of mass, the time rate of change of mass inside the control volume. That's all is to, um, to it, to this particular integral. Uh, integral in a digitized form will be a summation. So it, if it makes you feel uncomfortable, just think of it as summation of all the masses inside the control volume. So summation of all the DMs inside um, the control volume. So that's d by dt of all the masses, d by dt of all these masses inside the control volume. So the rate of change of mass inside the control volume must be balanced by the fluxes of uh, fluid coming in and leaving. So why do we have fluxes of fluid? We will come again to the integral in a second because here it's a little bit more complex. Um, so imagine now I have a control volume with multiple inlets and outlets. So here I have an inlet, here I have another inlet, and here I have number three, I have an outlet. So masses come in through the inlet and leave. Um, and that's why we need to do a summation. So think of this integral as a summation. I need to sum the masses over all boundaries uh, where they cross over all the boundaries of this uh, control volume. So now, sometimes, well, let's let's keep this to um, to the next slide. Okay, so here is uh, to summarize is that the rate of change of mass inside the control volume must be balanced by what comes in and out and comes in and out uh, at the boundaries of this control volume. So we can have multiple uh, multiple inlets, multiple outlets, and these should balance with what's happening inside the control volume. So we're doing basically. Uh, we're, we're taking the job of an accountant, except we're not doing money here. We're doing, um, we're doing mass. So we're balancing the books on, on mass. Okay, so here's our mass conservation equation. And now let's focus on, we've talked about the um, rate of change of mass inside the control volume. Now let's talk about the fluxes of mass that are happening uh, on the boundaries, uh, CS, the control surface, these are the boundaries of this control volume in the first term. So rho v relative dot n, so that's what we're, we're going to um, focus about. As we said, rho is the density, the v relative is the relative velocity, we've talked about this uh, in quite a bit uh, in the previous lecture. It's the, it is the velocity seen it is the velocity of the fluid that is seen by someone sitting on the control uh, surface. Um, so I, I could expand on that. It's the velocity of the fluid uh, incoming to the control volume or leaving the control volume as seen by someone sitting on the surface of this control volume. So you see here you have the velocity of the surface of the control volume. So the velocity if you remember the cup scooping experiment, this is the velocity of, of the cup, uh, and uh, this would be the velocity of the pile of sand. Um, so here we have the density, Vr is the relative velocity, and now let's look at A and N. So if I, if I, look, at my, if I look at a control volume, such as this one, and this is the most general control volume. Uh, we've seen a simple control volume here, right here, uh, right here. So that's a simple control volume with very well defined uh, inlet one, inlet two, and inlet three. But sometimes those inlets are not that well um, well defined. They can um, when you have 
a continuous type of input and output over uh, over the surface of the control volume. So uh, that's what we want to tackle at at this point. So let's look at this A and this uh, N. So this is my control volume. It has a volume. So inside the control volume, I have an element dV, or uh, which could be just or the element dm, which is rho dV. And now we're we're done with this because it was that term. But now let's look at the surface of the control volume. Let's say I have uh, I taken an area. So the vector n is perpendicular to an elemental area on the surface of the control volume and the vector n is a unit vector that points um, away from the control volume so it points to the outside so you want to keep that in mind it always points to the outside it's always 90 degrees to the area of the control volume that's n so you get you get the idea at any other point in the control volume and what could be happening is that uh, this control volume could be a real system just like the balloon we have um, we have seen before or it could be an imaginary system it could be um, an imaginary surface such as um, a, a sort of free body diagram or we're going to call it a control volume that's part of of a, of a larger system so on that control volume there could be masses coming in or out so there there is flow so let's say there is flow coming in this direction flow of air or flow of water so this could be a jet engine or something else and the velocity would make an angle theta so you see this is your velocity vector the red one and the n vector is the blue vector and you'll see they're making an angle theta and all I care about is, uh, so that angle theta is important. So what, what contributes to the mass that comes in and out of the control volume is the um, velocity component parallel to n. So I can break the velocity v into two components, one that is parallel to n and one that's perpendicular to n. This velocity, so this is v, um, uh, let's call it V uh, normal perpendicular to N and so that's parallel perpendicular to N that means it's parallel to the area and this is V parallel to the area it's parallel to the area uh, parallel to N I'm sorry this is V perpendicular to N this is V parallel to N so it's only the V that's parallel to N that contributes to uh, to the mass uh, flux at the boundary. The one that's parallel, as we've seen in the cup example, doesn't uh, do, uh, doesn't contribute any mass flux in and out of this control volume. All right. And here is your uh, the area dA that we are uh, talking about. And you can uh, now start thinking about the um, the mass flow, you know, uh, the mass flow going into a cup. So here's our pile of sand. It has a, which is our fluid. Um, it could be moving or it could be stationary. So it has the velocity V fluid. And uh, this is our surface. So as we said the previous time, I don't care much about uh, the cup itself. It's just to help us visualize what's going on. So all I care about here is just this area A. And this area A is where fluxes are crossing in and out. Um, has a unit vector perpendicular to its surface, which is the N. So this is an, this is an uh, application to, um, to this equation. And uh, the, this cup or this surface itself is moving at a velocity V control surface and what contributes to the mass inside into this uh, the the mass of sand uh, going into the cup is the relative velocity and not only the relative velocity it's the it is the component of the relative velocity that is 
uh, parallel to n, the component of the relative velocity that is perpendicular to the area. That's the only component that contributes to the mass flow. Okay, so now let's take this uh, one step further. Uh, this rho v relative dot n. So now we're comfortable with the relative velocity. And let's look at this v relative dot n. One example, so here is my here is my control volume for completion, for, for completeness. That's my control volume. That's my uh, elemental volume. So this is my volume v. Let's just write it over here. That's my volume v. And this is a boundary of the control volume. So it has an area, let's say, dA. And let's see what's happening at this dA. N, the relative velocity, is parallel to N. So would you think that this is an inlet or an outlet? Right, so uh, V relative is going for someone sitting on, so someone sitting on the boundary of this uh, control volume, such as here, so someone sitting here they will see that the fluid is moving at this velocity away from the control volume. So that's definitely an outlet. And we implement this equation. The angle between V relative and N is zero. So the dot product U is just uh, the dot product right here. You replace it with a cosine theta because that's the projected, uh, the projection of the velocity in the N direction. So you get V relative N times cosine theta. N is one, so uh, because it's a unit vector, as we said. Now let's look at the other case uh, where V relative and N, again, N is always pointing away from the control volume. So this is my control volume. So let me just draw over the other, um, the first example here. This wouldn't be our control volume. So you want to make sure because n points away from the inside of the control volume. So this is incorrect drawing of the control volume. This is the correct drawing of the control volume. So keep that, um, keep that in mind. Similarly here, this is my control volume. And now my V relative, again, is the relative velocity seen by the, relative ve the fluid velocity. Someone sitting on the control volume will see that the fluid is coming at a velocity V relative to uh, towards them. So someone sitting here on this straight line will see that velocity. And you'll see that it's in the opposite direction of n, so the angle between those two is 180 degrees or pi. So the cosine of pi is minus 1. So you'll get a minus v relative dot n. So that v relative dot n is just a minus v relative. Uh, cosine uh, 180. So if you had the V coming at a different angle, so you'll have to include the cosine of that angle. Um, but you'll see, yeah, but you'll, you'll still have that minus sign because the component perpendicular to the area is, is in the opposite direction of N. So it goes into the control volume. So what this comes to tell us, to conclude, this term over here in the mass conservation equation, accounts for all inlets and accounts for all outlets. So keep that in mind. So now let's, we can, so you see here, it accounts for all the inlets and it accounts for all the outlets. That's your, um, and you see we've now implemented the minus sign. So here I've, instead of just doing the integral over the whole control surface, I've broken it into inlets and outlets. So the rate of change of mass inside uh, the control volume will be equal to the mass fluxes coming into the control volume minus the mass fluxes leaving the control volume. So if I have more mass, so if this term is lar the inlet term is larger than the outlet term, I'm going to get uh, bulging or an increase in mass inside my control volume. If on the other hand, uh, this term is the outlet term is larger than the inlet term, this whole thing is going to be negative. So the rate of change of mass inside the control volume is going to be negative, and I am going um, to, to, to be losing mass from the control volume. So, But that makes this equation balance. 
we're not creating mass and we're not destroying it. Okay. Um, we want to look at 1D inlets and outlets. So that is going to come in the next slide. Uh, so bear with me. Um, if I have an area uh, such as, so that's the uh, area of a control surface. It's an area A. I could have my the velocity of the fluid um, to be either uniform over the surface or it actually could be non-uniform. So I could have a distribution of velocities over the surface area. And that's really why we really need why we really needed to do that uh, integral uh, that integral over here. Because if my velocity is variable, this V relative depends on A, this V relative cosine theta depends on a, then I have to sum up, sum them all up element by element. So that's what we're saying. So if I have, uh, this is my area a, uh, that's my inlet or outlet, and the velocity distribution could be linear, could be something else. For me to be able to uh, to account for what's happening to the mass flux, I really need to break it into small areas and for each area, take the corresponding for each area dA, a small area dA, take a the corresponding the correspondent v dot n, multiply them together, and then sum them up to the next to the dA next to it, and then the dA next to it, and then so on. And that's the process of uh, integration. So by summing, we're, we we mean integration. But I could have an easier um, experience by, in some cases by having my flow to be uniform over the area. So this is my area A, and this is my V relative right here. Could be inlet or outlet. So because V relative dot N is independent of the DA, it comes outside. So when it comes outside, uh, you just multiply what you're left with over here, because it comes outside, is just the DA. So the integral of DA is just the area uh, a. Uh, so we can write the conservation of mass for 1D. So that's 2D inlet out. So that's a 2D inlet. And a 1D inlet will have the flow to be uniform. So for a 1D inlet, um, the mass flux at the inlet will be just the density of the fluid, the velocity, perpendicular to the area multiplied by that area. And what we mean here is that I don't have variation of the velocity over the area of the, a particular inlet or a particular uh, outlet. So we're saying the rate of change of mass inside the control volume will be the summation of all mass fluxes. So this is our m dot. So all mass, mass flow rates coming in minus the summation of all mass flow rates coming in at all outlets, here, all inlets and all uh, outlets. And this is another another statement. So if, um, if my control uh, volume density doesn't change and the volume doesn't change, then, um, uh, then uh, and the system is steady, then this cancels out. So if I have a steady flow, uh, d by dt, so if I have a steady flow system where there's no accumulation in my in my control volume on the inside, uh, so the volume doesn't vary with time, the density doesn't vary with time in all parts of the control volume, so that d by dt term over here is going to be equal to zero of this whole mass of the control volume, then I I need so to uh, to satisfy mass balance, mass conservation, all mass fluxes coming in must be leaving at all outlets. So you sum all inlets, they and sum all outlets, and they must balance. So here you are an accountant. Um, so in this case, you have no net profit or loss. So if you were talking about money, uh, this would be the net profit or loss that you got and this is your 
uh, income and this is your expenditure, if if you will. So that's the um, your in influx of of um, money. That's the outflux of expend of money, which is expenditure, and the net between them is your profit or loss. If you have more money coming in, you're going to make a profit. If you have less money coming in, you're going to make a loss. So that's that's exactly what it is. And if you're if you don't have if you break even, that's what you're going uh, to get. If you're breaking even, there's no mass accumulating in your control volume, then your inlets and outlets must balance. So now let's define the volumetric flow rate. The volumetric flow rate is just the V times A, and uh, it's the mass flow rate divided by the density. So all this thing, as we said, is the mass flow rate M dot, rho VA is M dot, and um, the volumetric flow rate is just the m dot over rho. The m dot has units of kilogram per meter cubed, and the velocity has units of meter per second, and the area has units of meter square, so you're going to get meter cubed per second for the volumetric flow rate.